find the combined area where the width of the walkway is 4 feet. I don't even know what I'm reading. When you're given a word problem, are you left wondering, where do I even start? If so, you're in the right place because I'm about to give you a framework to help you ditch the fear of word problems and start solving like a champ. I'm Latrell Jackson, math coach at KOG Math Success Academy, and I use these same tips I'm sharing today with my students. They despise word problems too, which is why I'm creating the Word Problems Wednesday series to help you get more comfortable with the three steps I'm going to share with you today on solving word problems. So, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Okay, so we're successfully solving word problems in three steps. Step one, we want to read, reread, think, and rewrite each word problem. So, this is a breakdown. When you read the question the first time, make sure you read it slowly to become familiar with the situation. Then you want to reread the question. Read the question again slowly and point out specific details that may be needed for answering the question. I know when I read something the first time, I got to read it again because it may not register. I may not even know what I just read. So rereading it again is something that I apply to myself. Next up is think. Let the scenario in the question play out in your mind. See yourself in the person's position, if there's a person in the word problem. Make sure you're living it out with all your senses. Can you put yourself right in the middle of it and look around you? Make sure you're looking out your peripherals and what do you hear and see and taste and smell. That helps, you, that helps the problem to come alive to you. Make the problem your problem. So whatever the situation is that the person is dealing with in the problem, that's your problem. Then you're going to rewrite the whole problem. After visualizing the scenario from your own mind's eye, you're going to do these four things, okay? You're going to rewrite the question in your own words. That's important because that contributes to it becoming your own problem. Then you're gonna temporarily replace the numbers with blank spaces. So as you see the problem, the word problem here has blank spaces because that's where numbers used to be. I want you to really focus on what the situation is instead of trying to jump to doing the math first because that can get you confused on what to do because you haven't gotten all the information yet. So blank spaces, um, in place of numbers until you realize what's going on and then you can replace the numbers. So the fourth thing you're going to do when you're rewriting is to draw a picture or diagram. Okay, so um, whatever you rewrote, when you rewrote it in your own words, you were trying to visualize and put yourself in the position of the person or the situation in the word problem, it'd be good to draw you a picture of what you see in your mind. And in this uh, image here, you'll see um, a problem that says, uh, Masumi has three different colored tops and she has two different colored skirts. So she's trying, whoever is doing this problem is trying to match up the different tops with the different colored skirts to see how many um, combinations she can get. And now we're on to number two, and that's going on a scavenger hunt. So, the first thing we're going to look for when we're going on our scavenger hunt is numbers, okay? We're going to ask ourselves, what do these numbers represent in the problem? The units, like grams, seconds, gallons, etc., and other context clues will help you identify the definition of these numbers. The second thing we're going to look for are unknowns. Um, sometimes they may be in variables. Sometimes we have to make them into variables after we figure out that, it's un uh, that there is an unknown in the problem. So you can ask yourself, what are you trying to find? That'll help you uncover what the unknown is. What is the missing number that will be the solution to your problem? And are there any variables in the question? So you may see a variable already. It may give you a variable, X, M, T, things, uh, variables like that. 
Number three that we're going to be looking for are operations. Now, these are going to be hidden in the words. So what you need to do is identify verbal terms that can translate to algebraic terms, and these represent the operations. You're going to refer to your pre-algebraic translation guide to help you. If you want the guide, please put guide in the comment section, so I know you want it. And I'm going to show you how you can get the guide by the end of this video, okay? Let me show you how it looks. So here's the pre-algebra translation guide, and here's the table that um, actually shows you how you can um, identify verbal words and phrases that actually translate to algebra expressions. So words for addition like increased by, together, those are addition words. Words for subtraction like uh, decreased by, um, difference of, deducted, those are subtraction words. And you'll find examples in the right column I also have division, multiplication, and equal. So you really want this guide. Please type guide in the comment section and I will let you know by the end of this video how you can get yours. Number four in your scavenger hunt is separate steps. Now, sometimes we overlook this. We forget that there's more than one task that you have to complete in order to answer the question. So ask yourself, does the word problem require you to perform more than one task before you are able to fully answer the question? Then you need to write a quick summary, just a few words of each task. What is it that you need to do? Listing them in order so that you don't forget a step, okay? So if it says, um, Allison's bank account decreased by $5. That is subtraction, right? So that's one of the steps. And you can, you can just say decreased by $5 subtraction. And that can be your little summary. Now we're on to the third step. Solve with strategy and purpose. The first thing you want to do is pick the appropriate strategy to use for solving. So that could be a specific formula. Maybe you need to use the quadratic formula, or maybe you need a process like um, solving for y or solving for x. Um, maybe you need to apply a certain rule, the Pythagorean theorem or something like that, in order to um, complete the process of solving this word problem. You're going to double check to make sure you've actually answered all of the questions in the problem. So that's going back to um, our scavenger hunt where we're looking for the different steps, the separate steps um, that we need to take in order to make sure all of the questions are solved. So make sure you double check, go back to the question, and make sure you answer all of the questions and all of the steps involved in solving the, the word problem. Then you're going to label all your values, so that's your numbers, with units and a short description of what they represent. So um, you don't just want to write 25, you want to write, write 25 miles per hour, or you don't just want to write 348, you want to write 348 square feet. And what is that 300 square, 348 square feet? Maybe 340 square feet is the area of um, the room that you had to find the dimensions of or find the area of, okay? And then once you get your final answers, you're going to circle or box them so that they stand out. Whatever you prefer, just make sure that you, when you go back to this question, you're able to identify quickly what the answer was to this question. And it's not like somewhere up in the corner um, and you can't, you, you know, with so many numbers on the page, you want to make sure you can point out that this number is the final answer, okay? So, did that make sense? If it made sense, please type flow in the comment section so that I know that it flowed well enough for you. So, I bet you're wondering how you can get that pre-algebra translation guide. 
and you can get it by clicking the link in the description of this video to sign up for the Champs at Word Problems Challenge. It's a five day challenge that goes into depth of what I presented to you in this video and the first email will deliver to you the pre-algebra translation guide. So go ahead and click the link in the description and sign up. Can't wait for you to experience this challenge. So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the bell next to it so you'll be notified of my next video. And make sure you share this video with someone who needs it because I know there's someone you know who needs this video. Also, be sure to um, answer the survey question and let me know if you're going to use this strategy when solving your next word problem. Don't forget to come back in my next video where we will be launching our first Word Problems Wednesday. Can't wait to see you there. Bye!